Hi, and welcome back. Uh, today I have, again, something new. Well, not exactly new to me, but uh, new. Uh, AO Lithium. Uh, I currently have uh, two of their uh, rack mount 100 amp hour uh, 51.2 volt uh, packs. And uh, I've been talking to them about those packs, and they said, hey, do you want to try another one? And... Uh, so here we have it. We we have a a, a brand new 100 amp hour, uh, 5,120 watt hour, 5.120 kilowatt hour uh, rack battery pack, and they'd like me to uh, dig into it and uh, show everybody what it's made of. So let's first start with the crate here. This is a uh, a solid plywood crate uh, with its own skid built in. Um, the first one of these that I received, the, the lid was broken off in shipping, and it was all wrapped up, uh, I think, by FedEx with plastic wrap. This one has uh, drywall screws holding it, holding the lid down, uh, as well as staples. Uh, the drywall screws are new. I don't know if that is a aolithium thing or if FedEx did that because uh, they have experience with these lids. Uh, we, we will find out. I also have a uh, cable connection kit we'll get into later, but uh, let me first get this lid open and uh, get, the, get the, the, the battery out of here and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, so the uh, the staples on this are all folded over, so this lid came off in shipping, and FedEx added the uh, the drywall screws to it. So uh, that is some feedback uh, that we are providing right now to Aolithium. Let me uh, re-angle this a little bit, and uh, I'll show you what this looks like in the package. All right, so here we are in the package. We've got... Uh, Instruction book. Ooh, uh, nice. Some nice color graphics. A uh, piece of foam. An empty bag. Uh, mounting tabs. Some shards of wood. And a battery. Okay, it is now the next day. Uh, I was getting a little long in the in the tooth last night with the sun and everything, so uh, I have relocated the battery up onto a table because I'm not going to bend over and uh, show the insides of this thing for very long. Uh, but I wanted to get it up here, get some good light so we can open it up and see what's actually in here. Uh, it's all out of the box. I cleared the carton away. Uh, we've got an instruction book. Uh, they sent a set of cables. These are uh, two meter, I believe, cables. They are uh, 25. Um, uh, square millimeters, I believe that's four gauge equivalent in metric. Um, of note, they say on the side, um, uh, where is it here? I'll put it up somewhere, I'll take a picture and put it up somewhere. It says uh, minus 40 to plus 125C. They are very flexible, so this is like uh, some sort, it's not silicone, but it's some, some very flexible um, construction. Uh, I also have for my existing batteries, uh, these short jumpers that are meant if you arrange these uh, in a rack or a parallel arrangement, they have these short jumpers that are meant to go uh, between them. Um, but let me uh, let me get my driver. We will open this up and reposition, get a close look. I may end up wheeling it outside so we can get some really good light. And uh, let's see what's in here. Eighteen screws holding the lid on. 
put the lid. Okay, now we're going to reposition. Okay, in here, the individual uh, looks like it's uh, eight cells and eight cells. They got uh, plastic isolator material. I'm going to take my rings off. stuck down nicely too. And there's a piece that wraps around the back that it's very well adhered to over here. There we go. Same thing on that side. Tell you what, I'm going to take the camera off of the tripod so we can walk around here. Okay, so let's look at this up close here. So front front display, we've got these uh, the push-on connectors. So these cables. There's a uh, notch at the very top of that cable. Uh, connector which you align with that notch and it just pushes and clicks very satisfyingly and then you can swivel it there's a button on the side you press to release now let's look at the inside here so these are strapped that is a tight strap I can't hardly get my finger in it so that's that's good. There is a uh, looks like cast aluminum or maybe zinc block at this end. Same at the back side, and there's two sets of straps. So there's a strap at the top, and then there's a strap further down. Looks like there's insulation material between the bottom of the string and the case. Uh, these would be the uh, balance and uh, sensing taps for each cell. Notice they are labeled. So this says uh, B15+, plus, B13+, plus, B11+, plus, B9+. Plus. Uh, looks like a temperature sensor. It says T3, T4, there are little uh, Little isolate anti-vibration isolator pads under under the tabs. Um, unfortunately, these are welded, which is not really. It's well, it's it's great for integrity of the pack, but uh, it makes the pack more or less not serviceable. So you you're not going to go uh, remove individual cells in here and replace them. But uh, it certainly makes sure that a terminal doesn't get loose. Other side is the exact same thing. Look at that. It's all wire loomed in there, stuck down. That is that is some high quality. And um, these are all torque marked. There's actually two marks. There's uh, looks like a blue mark and then a red mark. Blue mark, red mark. That is nice. Okay, let's look at the uh, the BMS here. Well, let's look at the back. So the back here. The jumper between the cell banks, that is a flexible bus bar. And then up here at the BMS also, there's the main fuse. ASTM 2209 200, 50 KA, 50,000 amp uh, interrupting. That is, uh, that's a serious fuse. I think that is what they use on electric cars uh, and that sort of thing. 
Let's look at the back side of the input output. Again, here we have the same little flexible bus bar connector going from the uh, terminals to the BMS and also from the pack to the BMS. Same down here, flexible bus bar. These are all torque marked also, just the same. Good shot of the back side of the BMS. All the balance leads here, temperature sensors. This thing looks absolutely solid. What I'm not seeing is where the strings are attached to the case. Oh, here, it must be this. It must be these. This post goes down to this is a raised, this is a raised bit here from the from the actual true bottom of the case. So it this bracket bolts into there. And we have the same up front. So this this raised bar here, and we bolt straight down into that. So that is very solid. I really, really like this internal construction. All right, so that's what's inside of the uh, AO Lithium 51.2 volt 16S, 100 amp hour, 5.2 kilowatt hour uh, rack mount pack. Uh, this guy right here. Uh, I'm going to get the lid on and get it rearranged and down to my basement and get it on charge. I don't know what the current state of charge is. They're usually shipped at like 50%. But uh, I'll get it on charged, uh, on charge, make sure the cells are balanced up. And uh, in the meantime, before I do put the lid on, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and I'll post them here as a slideshow at the end of this. And uh, maybe make some commentary along with what I find uh, with those detailed photos. All right, here's a nice overhead shot of the whole assembly. Uh, I had mentioned one caveat of the welded terminals is you can't replace an individual cell. It is still serviceable. You would just have to replace an entire half of the battery. So uh, eight, you'd have to replace eight cells, uh, you know, one whole 24 volt section. But the rest of it can be uh, saved, reused, you know, if there's an issue. All right, here's a close-in shot of that fuse. It is, again, a 200 amp rated fuse with a 50,000 amp interrupting rating at uh, 200 volts and below, which is what the system operates at. That's that's a fuse. And this is the back side of those uh, push-to-click terminal connectors. Notice the fat copper bus bar joining the two positives and joining the two negatives. Uh, Anti-vibration cable goop elastic on the uh, balance leads and temperature sensors and some other places. Notice it's not actually holding the connector on, it's just holding the wires and pins inside of uh, their portion of the connector. Found a little coin cell on the back of the BMS board right next to the buzzer there. I'm assuming that is to hold uh, the air logs and cycle count and stuff. Uh, hopefully when it eventually dies it doesn't keep the battery from working. This is what I assume is the pre-charge resistor. It's uh, 10 watt, looks like 20 ohm rated. This uh, is what the system applies uh, in line across the output terminals as a current limiter when you press the button to turn on the BMS. The battery is not by default uh, hot to the outputs all the time. It is only energized when you push that button and it goes through a pre-charge sequence and then it uh, brings the full current of the battery available to the outputs. This is a great feature to have. It keeps you from causing huge sparks on the output, uh, frying your inverter, or uh, using your own pre-charge resistor and remembering to use it every time you disconnect and reconnect. Thanks for watching.